But wait a minute. What other businesses have branches? Ah, how about banks? I bank with Wells Fargo at one of their local banking branches. This simply means that this is one of hundreds of sub-corporate hubs which all link to the mother corporation, or the tree trunk, that is Wells Fargo Bank, the main corporation. And in truth, Wells Fargo Bank is probably connected to another mother corporation. McDonald's would be another example, this time using franchises, which pay the main corporation of McDonald's to be under its corporate protection, using its name and following its general business practices and standards while appearing to stand independent from the mother corporation. Does this mean that the Salt Lake City Police Department is owned by a private company? Considering the reference to the Salt Lake City Corporation's Law Department? Have our police become nothing more than corporate security? There to protect and serve the corporate interests of the city and state? The real question is, how can a government be a branch of another corporation? Is Salt Lake City just a subcorporate hub under another larger corporation? Well, needless to say, this really threw me for a loop. And so I decided to look at other governments within the great state of Utah and I found something very interesting. Here is an official website for the United States District Court for the state of Utah. The problem is, it doesn't refer to Utah as a state. Instead, it recognizes Utah only as a district. Here it states, the United States District Court for the District of Utah. Hmm. After some research, I found that the two-letter abbreviations that all 50 states have been assigned are simply federal district locator codes. States are still called by their full original names in name only. And you thought your state abbreviation was just for your convenience, so that you didn't have to write it out on letters, perhaps? Are other states in the same predicament? You betcha. Here is the state constitution for the state of Ohio. Now, an interesting note about Ohio, instead of entering and leaving what most states call the city limit, the signs in Ohio state that you are entering or leaving the corporation limit. Here are a few snapshots of these signs. This one is especially interesting, a 40 year before and after shot. Notice that the sign has changed, and a new speed limit is now posted for entrance into the corporation known as Gambier. This is common as each corporation has different speed limits. It also ensures that certain percentages of taxpayers will be speeding once they cross the corporate line. And that means speeding tickets, and that, my friends, means corporate revenue back to the Ohio State Constitution. When I click on the link, Organization of Cities, etc., I get the following page. The General Assembly shall provide for the organization of cities and incorporated villages by general laws and restrict their power so as to prevent the abuse of such power. Now, the key word here is obviously incorporated. But also, organization is a corporate term, just as businesses are organized and then reorganized in a bankruptcy. And just as the United States, as a federal corporation, has been reorganized more than one time in its history. In order to qualify this as true and break through the belief system set up by the corporate media, you may pause this video now and read this statement by Republican James Traficant which is in congressional record and was stated before he was thrown into jail. In Corporate Bankruptcy Code, Chapter 9 bankruptcies are allowed only for state municipalities. Chapter 9 bankruptcies are a form of corporate reorganization and not liquidation. So just what is a municipality? To get the answer to this, I went to a commonly used website named Wikipedia. Now, I don't usually use Wikipedia as a source, but in this case I made an exception. The information is well sourced and easily verifiable. A municipality, or municipal corporation, 
is the legal term for a local governing body, including but not necessarily limited to cities, counties, towns, townships, charter townships, villages, and boroughs, like the five boroughs which comprise New York City proper. Municipal incorporation occurs when such municipalities become self-governing corporate entities under the laws of the state or province in which they are located. Often, this event is marked by the award or declaration of a municipal charter from the state of incorporation. Let's take one of the largest states as an example. Do you live in California? If so, which corporation do you live in? There are 480 incorporated municipalities in California, of which 458 are called cities and 22 are called towns. Under California law, the terms city and town are explicitly interchangeable. See Government Code sections 34500 through 34504. So, the name of a municipal corporation can either be city of blank or town of blank, regardless of its population. The term township is obsolete. The terms villages and borough have never been used in California. Here's an alphabetical list. And I'll bet that you find your own city or town. Notice that the left-hand column lists the city or municipality. The middle column lists the county where that municipality is housed, which is a totally separate corporate entity with its own local, national, and international investments and enterprise operations that must also file a comprehensive annual financial report every end of business year. And the right-hand column shows the date of incorporation for the city or municipality, some going more than a century back in history. Are you sweating yet, Mr. Walker? Which corporation do you live in? There's Sacramento, my hometown. So let's use California as our example state. California has one of the largest economies in the world. All of this business is conducted within the over 18,000 different governments within the state, each one a separate incorporated entity. If you have a private business incorporated anywhere within the state of California, it must be incorporated within one of these municipalities and within the state's corporate guidelines. Each corporate city or town that was just listed has within them other municipal corporate structures like school districts, pension funds, utility companies, city councils, and even enterprise operations such as golf courses, movie theaters, malls, etc. etc. As stated earlier, the government owns just about everything you see through collective investment. But you must not think of these as just individual corporations, for as we saw above with the Salt Lake City Corporation, these more than 18,000 corporate governments in California are like bank branches as well. The only way to get a grasp on the power, wealth, prosperity, land, and property ownership of the state of California is to take all of these over 18,000 individual corporate governments, including school districts, counties, the state corporation, municipalities, enterprise operations, cities, towns, pension funds, etc., not forgetting its foreign investments and operations, for instance, CalSTRS is now an offshore multinational corporation, and then add up their collective private investments and count them as branches or sub-corporations of one main corporation, which is California Incorporated. What better way to hide the wealth of the corporate government than to divide it up into thousands and thousands of branches, making it nearly impossible to add up the actual ownership and wealth of the government as a whole. But don't stop there. 
For then, you must consider that collectively, between the municipalities and individual corporate governments within all 50 of the United States proper, America houses over 185,000 different corporate governments, municipalities, and entities, which we might as well call branches. Now, the word collective is vital to comprehend here. For as one giant framework of a country, this collective corporate United States government owns almost everything in sight, and this will be shown later in this presentation. The United States has now been almost completely privatized, with land and municipalities often being sold off to foreign investors and foreign private corporations. In fact, under Executive Order 12803, signed by then-President of the United States, George H.W. Bush, in 1992, the Corporation of the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., neither a state nor a part of the 50 states united, this federal corporate government was given the authority to privatize most or all of the infrastructure within the United States without congressional consent or vote. This means that the federal government, or the corporation that acts in lieu of a federal government, can and has allowed the selling of any municipalities, or city, or any government's assets which were built with taxpayer monies, including, but not limited to, roads, tunnels, bridges, electricity supply facilities, mass transit, rail transportation, airports, ports, waterways, recycling wastewater treatment facilities, solid waste disposal facilities, hospitals, prisons, schools, and housing. Executive Order 12803 lists these as examples of America's saleable and or leasable infrastructure. But this is not to be taken as a complete list, as these are just some examples of what our government has been selling off to foreign investors for almost 20 years. Executive Order 12803 names this authority in its destructive pages as infrastructure privatization, and states that this power allows for the, quote, disposition or transfer of an infrastructure asset such as by sale or by long-term lease from a state or local government to a private party. Now, wasn't it our good friend David Walker who said that the government isn't interested in selling off these assets that they don't list on the taxpayer budget? Well, what is the government doing with all of these investments? Why does why does the U.S. Not why does the federal government own ninety for five percent of Nevada and ninety seven percent of Utah? That's, that's an issue of federal lands, okay, federal minerals. That's okay, that's and, an and, asset, and right? that's correct. But and you are correct in saying that that's not on the balance sheet. They don't value that because they have no intention to sell. It. All right, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just trying to explain it. Is it the government's land or is it our land? It's well, the people's like, oh. It's supposed to be. <laughs> well, but if the if the government is a corporation and it's actually 185,000 different corporations, how is if something that's owned by a corporation our land? Yeah, government is not a corporation. Yes, it is. Most certainly, all corporations have to file a comprehensive annual financial report. Yeah, but the government is not a corporation. It's most certainly is. I can assure you, it's not. Really, it's wrong. the government is not a corporation. When we look at Executive Order 12803, infrastructure privatization. We read in Section 1, Definitions, For purposes of this order, A, privatization means the disposition or transfer of an infrastructure asset, such as by sale or by long-term lease, from a state or local government to a private party. In other words, the selling of taxpayer-funded infrastructure to private corporations or individuals. B, infrastructure asset, means any asset financed in whole or in part by the federal government, in other words, taxpayer money, and needed for the functioning of the economy. Examples of such assets include, but are not limited to, roads, tunnels, etc. And D, transfer price means the amount paid or to be paid by a private party for an infrastructure asset if the asset is transferred as a result of a competitive bidding. 